This video has been brought to you by DataVinci Analytics Agency. So I am right now in Google Tag Manager. Okay. So to start uh, tracking the impression of a certain element, the first thing that you need to do is create a trigger. Okay. So how do we create a trigger? We will select the element visibility trigger. This one. Okay. Now here you will see that there are two options. One is the ID and second is the CSS selector. So how do you get the ID and the CSS selector? So if you inspect this element, right? So you can get the various attributes of this particular element. Now here, as you can see that there is no ID attribute. So we cannot use the ID in this case. In case the ID is available, you simply need to uh, copy that ID. So for example, here we have an ID, right? So we can take this ID testimonials. It's supposed to be case sensitive and paste it over here element ID in case the ID is not available which was the case over here so what we need to do we will inspect this element by clicking uh, by right clicking on it and clicking on inspect and once it gets highlighted we will click on copy again I am uh, coming over here by right clicking and then click on copy selector right now here instead of ID we will click on CSS selector and paste it okay so whatever we copied from here by simply clicking on copy copy selector if you paste it here it will get pasted uh, uh, based on your selection all right next you will have uh, three options one is once per page then second is once per element and third is every time an element appears on screen now what's the difference uh, between these three now once per page is very easy to understand that if this element is detected on the page right it will fire only on the first time this element gets uh, detected the trigger will act only on the first time right once per element so let's assume that uh, you have multiple elements okay uh, which follow the same uh, uh, CSS selector or follow the same ID right so if you have multiple elements then in case of that only one element will get uh, 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 like every time the trigger would get fired only for one element so if multiple elements are having the same attri attribute only uh, once per each element the trigger would get fired okay now every time an element appears on screen that is very easy to understand every time the element appears the trigger would fire okay irrespective of uh, whether the user has already seen it or not seen it every time the trigger uh, the element appears the trigger will fire okay now here uh, the minimum percent visible what is this setting using this setting uh, you can pr provide the information that when should you consider that the element was visible all right so 50 percent is default so that means that even if 50 percent of that element was visible in the screen of the user the trigger would fire okay the more you increase it the more rigid you are making it and the uh, the lesser you keep it the more relaxed you are keeping it right so if you make it 100 percent so obviously you mean that the entire element should be properly visible then only the trigger should get fired all right now the next one is set minimum on screen duration so minimum on screen duration is also very easy to understand so if the user just skims through it and uh, uh, this means that the user might not even have seen that then you can set a minimum duration right so you can say that at least it was visible or present on the user's screen for two two thousand milliseconds that is at least for two two seconds all right so uh, that gives you the the option to make sure that you can refine your tr trigger as much as possible right the next one is observe dom changes now what is observe dom changes so uh, i think you already now know what's dom i have covered it one of uh, in one of my previous videos dom is nothing but this entire code the document object model so if you inspect or uh, view page source right so this is nothing this is the dom this code is in a way called the dom right this code so uh, observe dom changes so you might have uh, noticed that sometimes uh, if, if you inspect the elements a lot or if you're just starting with your digital analytics career or uh, your e-commerce career 
right so if you would be playing a lot with the code at times you will notice that based on certain interactions the dom changes the code of the dom would change and it would be visible over here if you are inspecting the page right so when you click on observe dom changes right so gtm would be observing if the code changes or not so uh, let's say that there's a form submission and post that form submission a new element gets visible uh, such that it tells the user that thank you for submitting the form right thank you for showing interest then this setting of observe dom changes would be helpful all right now uh, there is a caveat over here that uh, setting a minimum on screen duration or config configuring the trigger to observe dom changes requires gtm to monitor the status of the selected elements when uh, multiple elements on a given page are matched site performance may be affected for best performance ensure that your css selected does not match a large number of elements or use id as your selection method so what is the caveat over here that if you are enabling these elements and you have select uh, chosen a C css selector all right such that multiple elements get qualified based on your selection of css selector okay so in that case it can happen that GTM can affect the performance of the site, right? Because GTM has to constantly monitor what is going on in the DOM. So in such a case, it is advisable to use uh, uh, an ID based selection, this one, or use if you're using CSS selector, then use a selector such that it is not, uh, 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 you know, common across multiple elements. The method of uh, choosing the CSS selector the way we have done it, right? like this so this would in general ensure that uh, the css selector is somewhat unique okay if you still want to validate that whether the css selector is present across uh, multiple elements or not what you can do you can simply go to console and just type uh, jquery and here you can just paste the css selector okay now if you see that there are uh, multiple objects right so in that case you can say that this css selector spans across multiple buttons but here what we can see is that there is only one object zero if there would have been multiple objects then multiple would have come, uh, come. so i'll just simplify this example let's say that i choose uh, an anchor tag by simply putting a okay now here as you can see right there are multiple anchor tags on the page which is obvious so i would not uh, put a css selector and put simply a over here and uh, use this setting all right because it would create conflicts right uh, the last one is pretty easy to understand uh, this we uh, as you know that we use this setting very regularly in most of the sessions that uh, we have created so far so all element all visibility event so uh, you already have created some kind of refinement over here right but if you want to further create some kind of additional settings right so you can choose some visibility events and then choose a variable for which you want to filter the the visibility okay so let's let's uh, create this trigger and then i will elaborate further on this so uh, we have book a call visibility trigger Okay, now which booker call was this? Let's say call it RDNA. I'll refresh this. So now I'm back on the page and I've refreshed the page. So if I scroll down. the element visibility trigger fires all right this is another element visibility trigger this is not the same one and it actually cannot be the same one because here we have chosen the condition of once per page right but let's now uh, uh, as we were discussing the case to to calculate the click through rate now let's associate a tag with this one so that we can calculate the total number of uh, impressions of this particular button in google analytics all right so 
so we'll click on tags we'll click on new and let's call it ga underscore book underscore uh, dna underscore event tracking event that's it okay so we are going to select google analytics universal analytics the event type is the track type is event category can be element visibility action can be book call uh, dna and label in general i keep to uh, i prefer to keep the label as a page url right Now here, this is actually a non-interaction hit because the user is not interacting with it. So we will keep this one as true. Okay, we'll choose the Google Analytics variable. And now we can choose the trigger. So the trigger that uh, we had created was this one. Right, so I'll just save this. and refresh the preview element visibility is coming by default because we refreshed at the same uh, spot and as you can see that ga book uh, dna event that has already fired let's just validate that in omnibug as well Here, I'll just uh, refresh the page again. And as this one got visible, you can see that this event fired with uh, event action as book call DNA, event visibility. Uh, even so category as element visibility and label as the URL of the page and we had set the non interaction hit also as one because the user is actually not interacting with it right so using this event you can calculate the total number of times this particular uh, element got visible right and uh, you can use the click tracking the, the uh, course or the video uh, where I covered everything how to do click tracking in, in the previous video, the link for which is in the description box below to track the total number of clicks on this uh, button. Now using the combination of these two, you can create some kind of calculated metric or you can get the data in Google Sheets using the Google Analytics add-on and then calculate the click-through rate. All right. So this is just a very simple example, but in general, this is how you can use the element visibility trigger. A very good uh, application of element visibility trigger is uh, with form submissions. All right. So I hope uh, that this uh, video was helpful and uh, you understood how the element uh, visibility trigger works. But in case you have any questions, just put that in the comment box below and I will address them. All right. Take care. Bye.